Hi guys, in this episode of the Nostalgia Trip, I'm gonna be continuing with my reactions to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 2012 series. Currently we are on Season 5, Episode 8, The Frankenstein Experiment, and Episode 9, Monsters Among Us. Basically, we are halfway through Season 5, because Season 5 is only 20 episodes, for those of you who don't know. And... Yeah, so far has been definitely very memorable compared to previous seasons, for sure. Mostly because of the fact that we have uh, four episode long story arcs instead of season long story arcs. And we don't really have filler in the episodes, really. Uh, because, like I said, uh, it's split in about three or four episode long story arcs. At least so far the two story arcs have been four episodes. And it has been definitely very refreshing and very interesting to watch through, even if sometimes the episodes that are kind of like in the middle of the story arc feel, feel kind of lame and unfinished because of the fact that we are still not through with the story arc. It has been generally really uh, entertaining so far um, in many ways. And we are currently halfway through the second arc of the season, which is the monster arc. With the episodes, like I said, Frankenstein Experiment and Monsters Among Us. And out of the two, I expect to enjoy Monsters Among Us much more because I already explained why, but to reiterate, because the setting for the Frankenstein Experiment is not going to be as refreshing and interesting as it was for the Mummy episodes uh, two episodes ago. I really like that one. But Monster Among Us is going to be most likely bringing us back to the present time and dealing with all the shit that happened because of these time travel shenanigans. So it's going to be essentially the culmination. I definitely don't think it's going to be anywhere as epic as episode 4, which was uh, End Times or whatever it was called, where uh, the zombie shredder sacrificed himself. That was really kind of insane episode, honestly. One of the most insane episodes I've ever seen of this show. And that is saying something, for sure. Um... But I'm still uh, hyped to get through it, not only because uh, it's going to be a really good ending, I expect, for a overall decent storyline, but because I can't wait to get into the first official three-parter of this season. Or, actually, it's not a three-parter, it's a two-parter, my bad. But yeah, um, before we get into the reaction though, I do want to remind you that you can get a full line version of uh, this reaction over on my Patreon or on my Coffee account, where by subscribing to the specific tire I've created for it, you get access to all of my full line reactions, which pretty much uh, includes uh, almost all episodes of TMT 2012, almost all episodes of Full Metal Alchemist 2003, and almost all episodes of Generator Rex. And I say almost all episodes because when I started doing full length reactions, I was like two or three, uh, three or four episodes uh, into all of these shows. But going forward, pretty much every show that I react to will have all of their uh, full length reactions over there. But yeah, if you want to do that, do it. If not, stick to the reaction. Hopefully, you enjoy it either way. So, without further ado, let's start off the reaction with the Frankenstein experiment in three, two, one. The experiment. Is that the hunchback guy? Always with the experiment. Yeah. What's this? Man, they're really showing a lot of the gore and stuff. Well, as much as they could for this show. They're getting away with a lot of shit. In my so it is best you know your place amongst the monsters. Jesus, one more terrifying than the other. <laughs> it is kind of lame to see uh, this vampire turtle right there with these iconic horror monsters. You know, this is better than the Dark Universe. What is happening? Of course he's gonna see the goddamn shredder! Where the hell did they go? Oh, he's manipulating them. Make them suffer. Why didn't he do that earlier if he could do that? It's a pretty nifty power. Why are you messing with time, you piece of shit? Also, it's kind of weird to think that these things are actually real and have actually happened in history of TMNT. 
I mean, we've seen weirder shit, but it is kind of weird to think about. Man, I really like the zombie no, shredder. Not you too, Karai. Wait, did she say cereal? Is that a fucking... Is that a fucking, uh... Reference? To The Last of Us, or am I misremembering uh, from where... Uh... From where that is from? Because I swear so there's some character which says, Are you cereal? Did that happen in The Last of Us or am I confusing it with something else? Don't you understand? No! It's from Life is Strange! It's from Life is Strange! We'll both get something out of it. I'll become a full vampire. And you will be my servants. Wait, what do we get out of it again? Don't you see? We can rule together! That's not you talking, Raph! Fight it, daddy -o. What about Raph? I don't know, man. Unless you or Renette come up with some bright idea, Raphael may be lost forever. Man, that must hurt on Leo. He lost Splinter and now he lost his bro one of his brothers. I don't understand why would lightning give it life though. That's not how life happens, you know? In a way, life is electricity, it's energy, yes. But this is also decomposing body parts. I know it's a cartoon, but how the fuck does that actually bring it to life? Jesus, that is creepy. I don't know what's creepier, this or the zombie shredder. Father, no. Is that the voice actor for Splinter? Abomination. No, he's not. He just wants love. Your love. It's cool. What makes I Frankenstein the one of the power most powerful beings okay. ever? He doesn't have magical powers. He's not a vampire. He's not mystical in any way. He's just a body. Just a decaying body. He's the best a brute. Just like the werewolf. <laughs> well, he's dead. Traitor! That's what happens to traitors. You need more training, Leonardo. Oh, yes! In the ass! Well, the back, but still. Well, I'm gonna be the first one. <laughs> Hello, brother. No! 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 You're not going anywhere, Donatello! Rock, just stop trying to scare us! Hmm. If I mounted the time scepter to that primitive antenna, I wonder if I could recharge it. Called it! <laughs> Fucking called it! I don't know if I kept it in the reaction, but I called it! So it just charges up with fucking electricity? Oh, no, I mean, I guess that's more logical than trash for the DeLorean. Frank, come back. Uh, uh, no. Get back. 
Why would you do that to your brother, Donnie? Man, I'm really starting to hate fucking Dracula more than Savanti at this point. Go and die! Monster, come with me, and no one will see you as a freak. We creatures of the night shall rule. At least I got the time scepter partially charged up again. Partially? It was a fucking lightning that should have charged it up to 100%. We're going back to the future. Fools! You can't stop the master. He's recruiting Frankenstein's monster as we speak. You've already lost. Don't hiss at me, asshole. I don't know if it's the fact that I've reacted to so many episodes today or that this story. Uh, like, it's generally not that exciting, but I don't really have much to say about this episode as well. It just, it, it's not the, f we haven't seen the final story, so it, it is kind of boring in a certain way. Like, there's not much excitement. Like, sure, this story was cool and all, just like the last one, but I don't know. I just don't really have much to say about it. I feel like at this point, I'm just kind of ready to be over with this story arc because it's just not that entertaining to me. And like I said before, we've already done the time travel, follow Savanti in a bunch of different time zones before. So it just feels like we're doing the same shit again. And while in a way, it is kind of cool to see the turtles in these different locations and time periods and everything. I also don't find it particularly exciting, you know? Which is kind of weird because usually I'm a sucker for time travel, but it just doesn't do it for me in this case of Timothy 2012. And these episodes are also kind of weirdly bland in a way. Maybe it's because the turtles don't really use their goddamn weapons to fight and it's just... In my opinion, the, the writing in the characters is not strong enough to compensate for the fact that they do not use their weapons and then include the fact that Raph has been captured and he's a vampire as well. That also takes out another enjoyment out of it it just brings it down to the point where i can't really enjoy it that much and this one was even worse in that regard it's not that these episodes are badly made i don't think they are it's just that what they are about just is not entertaining enough on its own like i said it's very much the same kind of situation as with young justice season four the episodes by themselves because they're clearly uh pieces of a bigger puzzle they're not entertaining enough on their own like like i said for a puzzle imagine looking at one small piece of a puzzle and trying to enjoy uh the picture that it has compared to the bigger picture it's obviously not going to be as entertaining as the bigger picture and that's kind of how i feel about this it's not bad but certainly it it needs to be seen in the realm of the whole story arc to be really uh understood and enjoyed and the thing is uh, as well for the villains, I hate them because they're annoying to me, because they're infuriating to me, not because I enjoy them as a villain. I like the Shredder as a villain. I love Krang Supreme as a villain. I don't like uh, Savanti as a villain at all. And I hate to hate Dracula because he's just so self-righteous and pompous. And in, in a way, yeah, that is actually an emotion which signifies that it's a good villain. But at the same time, I don't enjoy hating him. I hate hating him because he's annoying to me. He's not a villain that I I enjoy. He's not the kind of villain that I enjoy. He's just like Savanti. He is very over the top and pompous. And I just don't like that in a villain. I like more down to the earth and relatable or almighty kind of villains, which is what the Shredder and Crank Supreme are, respectively. So yeah, this one is, uh, in that regard, even less entertaining to me, uh, which is why, in terms of rating, this one is gonna get just an 8 out of 10. And yeah, you might see that these ratings have gone down compared to even my ratings in Season 4, but yeah, as much as I like the story arc uh, uh, structure for this season, and I still think it's really good, I just don't really like this story, uh, story arc at all. Or at least the episodes that so far comprise it. 
And I guess I just expected as big of a jump and as much excitement as I got for Season 4. But we're not really getting that that much, but it is definitely improved in quality. Uh, it's complicated and the burnout is definitely taking its toll as well. But we're going to be reacting after the next episode, Monster Among Us. We're going to be reacting to uh, When Worlds Collide as well for today. And we're going to leave the final nine episodes for tomorrow. But yeah. Overall, fine, like, it's not a bad episode in any way, I don't think it really even has flaws, it's just that it's not an exciting episode, just like the last two episodes, so I'm hoping that the final one is gonna compensate for all three, I really hope uh, that it will, because with each passing episode, I've been more and more disappointed with the story arc, and uh, if that one doesn't hit it, I'm gonna be really, really bothered by that, but yeah. Um, let's get into episode 9, Monster Among Us, which seems to be very likely the final part of this story arc in 3, 2, 1. Garlic, what does the smell remind you of, Mikey? <gasps> Don't listen to him, Mikey! For fuck's sake! Mmm, savory red sauce. Trying to get to Mikey through his love of pizza. That is a low blow, Raph, even for a vampire. That was funny. It's us. Wait, what? That was the beginning of our journey through time to stop Savanti from building his monster army. It didn't really go so well. No shit. Thing, there seem to be more monsters now than when we left. Savanti Romero and my master Dracula are gonna make turtle soup out of you fools. You know you're a turtle and too, dumbass. The you know the history of what happened. Give us something. Um, no, because Savanti is changing everything by the second. <laughs> and soon. Yeah, time is probably in well. flux right now. <laughs> Ooh, red moon. That looks really cool. Yep, I was waiting for that. It was calm before the storm. What the fuck are those things? Man, this is kind of terrifying. So many creatures, scary looking creatures following them. Ow. Man, I genuinely can't believe that this is still the same show we've been watching since what 2020 was it or 2021 i think it was 2021 uh-oh it's a zombie apocalypse except these are not dumb zombies but again what are those are those my Dracula? Yeah. Oh. What is your bidding, master? Yeah. Whose blood do you want us to suck, yo? I kind of love that they still keep their personality even as vampires. Isn't there a way to fix all this with your time scepter? Focus on the research, Ice Cream Kitty. Ah? Uh -huh. I can tell. The less in these old horror comics. Man, I love Ice Cream Kitty. The master. If we destroy Dracula, it's so cute. I love how it actually behaves like an actual person. He's writing hey, down shit. That is so adorable. Back in the lair, I'm feeling much better. Jesus Christ. Garlic off me, Mikey. That is kind of terrifying. Yes, take garlic off. Oh my God. Oh. Why is that so sad? Nothing can stop us now! 
and Ice Cream Kitty tried to stop him. Oh shit! Oh my god! For fuck's sake, Graf! We're invaded! We gotta run! Where to? No! For fuck's sake! Man, the stakes are really going to be very high for this. Everybody's dying, everybody's getting bitten and shit. Man, I love Leo. This this outfit looks really good on him and makes him even more badass. Like I said, it reminds me of the 2003 series. What? Well done, Raphael. What is the meaning of this? Oh my god, this is literally the first arc all over again. With the bad guy betraying the supposed old bad guy and trying to rule for himself. This is literally that arc, but worse. It's not working. Why isn't it working? It's mommy again. And that's why bad guy uh, working together doesn't really last for long. Because they can never trust each other and work together. Man, the constant chase is so terrifying. Man, I would really love to see a post-apocalyptic Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. We've seen a post-apocalyptic uh, Scooby-Doo, so I don't see why we can't see a comic book at the very least of uh, post-apocalyptic Team and T. Link it in the description in the comments if there is actually one that I'm not aware of. It's totally probable, and you will not be able to stop us. Why? I'm really curious how they're actually going to defeat them. Because we will destroy you now. We'll be taking that, thank you very much. Wait, what? I don't got it, Mikey! What did you just do? Medieval knights, majestic heroes of bravery. They'll help us, dudes. Who's this? Who do I get the Wait, didn't we have fucking knights in the beginning? I kind of forgot because I'm also getting a little tired. Wait, fucking what? Where the fuck are we? Are we at the tails of the fucking yokai? Gross! Feel free to help out anytime, guys! Seriously? <laughs> Oh man, this is so hype and so fucking exciting, like, things are changing every second, holy shit. Like I said, just like episode 4. Oh shit! Good job, Mikey! Um, are we sure we didn't start watching the 2003 series at some point? Because it really feels like it. Why is every TMNT series bound to be gone really edgy by the end of its run? I'm surprised Rise of TMNT hasn't uh, uh, become that. And now I am forever trapped in this forsaken age. Don't worry, Volko. I'll return you to your time before you became a werewolf. Oh, thank you. Thank you, great and powerful witch. Oh, what a Frank. 
I would never forget you, Frank. You turned the tide of this battle. Hell yeah, he did. In the future where you'll be appreciated by everyone. Oh. Aww. I can't thank you, Turtles, enough. You are all groovy to the max. Awesome. Party on, Renette. You are the most incredible person who has ever lived in the history. Kiss her. That's the on the lips. God damn it. Wait, what was the first? You'll just have to wait until we meet again, Michelangelo. In the future. Are we gonna meet her again before the end of the season? How about some trick-or-treating, team? Tonight is the night! How about no? I've had enough monsters for fucking decades. Whew. Okay. This one was definitely a hell of an episode. There was a lot of exciting uh, stuff happening. It was very energetic and very fast paced. And I enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed it. That's what I'm saying. They keep all the exciting stuff for the final episode. Which then makes it a very exciting episode, but maybe debatably a little rushed. And I gotta say... Despite the fact that I really felt like it was an unwinnable battle for the turtles, like I was wondering how the hell are they going to actually defeat all these bad guys? It ended up, uh, they ended up being defeated in a, in a very understandable or reasonable way because of infighting between the bad guys. And yeah, I, I, I definitely uh, enjoy this quite a lot. And it is, just like I said already like five times, it is very much like... Uh, Young Justice Season 4. The first three episodes are boring. The fourth one is exciting. But yeah, I think at least now after this we are pretty much done with like the four episode long story arcs. At least it seems like it because the next uh, two episodes are a two-parter. And after that, uh, after that I'm pretty sure we have like three three-parters. So yeah, we'll see about that. But yeah, overall, really, really exciting episode. But again, it does kind of feel a little bit like a filler story arc. Uh, because we dealt with Savanti before. We sent him back in time before. And we did that shit again. So what was the point of this storyline? Like, it feels more filler. Like, in a way that the first uh, uh, arc with, like, the Cavaxas guy didn't. That one felt like a continuation of what we had before. Very much like what we had in the 2003 series in season 5 where it was a continuation of the already existing story. But this this feels like filler. This kind of feels like season 6 of the 2003 series in a way. Down to the blandness, not really exciting even at best of times. Yeah, it very much feels like season 6 of the 2003 series. So I'm curious whether the next one's gonna feel like season 7. Who knows? But yeah, this is definitely easily the most exciting episode of the of the four. Which is why, in terms of a rating, I am going to give it a 9 out of 10. It was very entertaining, especially when we kept switching locations and time zones. That was really exciting, because the, the tide of the battle was switching constantly. We It wasn't clear who was gonna win and who was gonna lose. Like, that was very entertaining, very much... The same kind of shit we've gotten in the previous arc with the constant switching of who holds the the seal that was controlling Cavaxus. Yeah, pretty entertaining. But I'm glad we've done with the monster crab because I just really hate that in this arc the turtles was, were pretty much not using their actual weapons. I really hate that about their time traveling episodes because it's so fucking annoying. That is one of the best things about the show, the fighting, and they don't really get to do that. I don't enjoy seeing Leonardo shoot a gun with a bunch of spears, you know? But yeah, um, what did you guys think about these two episodes? Comment your thoughts down below, and let's have a discussion about it. And also, comment your thoughts in general about the story arc so far, and how you compare it to the first one with Cavaxus. Because I feel like the Cavaxus one was definitely better. Um... But yeah, comment your thoughts down below and let's have a discussion about it. And also, before we end this video, I just want to give a huge shout out to my currently one patron on Patreon, Deadpool. Thank you for your support, I really appreciate it. It really means a lot to me that you've decided to support me, you've continued to support me for such a long time. I hope you continue to enjoy my content and continue to support me going forward. Thank you very much.
And now, before we end this video, I just want to talk about something uh, to you guys very quickly, um, which some of you may or may have not noticed before or know about me, that being the fact that I am trans. And yes, this may come uh, as shocking uh, to some of you because I don't really flaunt it that much on my channel, or at least I feel like I don't. Um, outside of like my K-pop reactions, which is where I feel like the most comfortable being myself like this. And yeah, I am in fact trans. Um, I'm not necessarily full on uh, male to female, but I heavily want to transition to being pretty female. I do consider myself more non-binary though, or maybe gender fluid would be the best descriptor as well, because I do have occasional moments where I feel fine being like just a normal guy, but most of the time, like right now, I do feel very dysphoric. Um, and that's why I'm asking you guys for any help that you can give me, because my situation right now, I, I don't really see any way out of, outside of you guys' help. Because, and this is gonna be kept short and concise, I live with my parents, they're never going to accept me as a trans person, they, they just never will. And as a matter of fact, back when I started the YouTube channel, I was actually kind of slightly starting my transition back then, with like starting to grow out my hair, um, I even got to DIY HRT, but because my parents started noticing certain things like... Uh, uh, my behavior had changed a lot and my clothes had changed a lot. I kind of had to stop doing that because they were constantly nagging me about cutting my hair and just started to kind of be threatening in a certain way and felt like they were ashamed of me and everything. And that just kind of, that kind of stress just tired me out to the point where I just gave up. But as dysphoria goes, it just doesn't go away, you know? I still feel like this, and in fact, it's somewhat been intensifying again recently, so I just wanted to share this with you guys. And again, I would really appreciate any amount of support you can give me in regards to this, because um, I just don't see any way out of this. Because even if I mo uh, moved out of my parents' house, and got my, myself a job and everything, that's just not gonna work for long-term uh, planning because once I transition, it's like I probably will not be able to get myself a job because my country is very transphobic, nobody gives a shit about LGBT people at all, so there's not even much I can do even in terms of transitioning here. So, yeah, I don't know. I just would appreciate any amount of support you can give me, uh, be it monetarily or in any way otherwise. And this is not about uh, boosting my channel or anything or guilt tripping you with my sob story. I just wanted to get this off my chest and make my subscribers aware of the situation that I am in and that I would appreciate anything that you guys can help me out with. It would mean literally everything. Like, for example, uh, a friend that I made after starting this YouTube channel, my good friend Yuri, has been helping me out a lot. And I genuinely might have not been here if it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for him showing up and befriending me. So yeah, this just went a little bit longer than I, I intended, but I would just uh, really appreciate anything you can support me with. That's kind of ultimately what I'm trying to say. And yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, please leave a like, subscribe, also check out the links in the description to my Twitter, if you don't follow me over there, and to my Wattpad, where I post my stories, because in addition to doing all these videos on my channel, I'm also a writer. And if you enjoy enjoy my stories, or simply enjoy my videos, you can head over to my Patreon, or to my Coffee account, where you can pledge your support and help get the channel going, help support me so I can keep writing stories you enjoy. But if you don't want to do it, that's completely fine, you can still help me out in other ways like liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and especially sharing this video with somebody who you think might enjoy it. And I think this is pretty much it for this video, so hopefully I'm gonna see you in the next one. Bye!